You're my doing. King Ding Bai here with a special guest today, the man, the myth, the legend, Joey Shape 72. How are you doing, my man? What is going on with you? No, man, I'm ready for this game tonight against the Giants. Um, I'm just ready to get this started, man. We need a win in the win column. We need something. We need we need to start a little bit of a, a little bit of a line of wins here. So I'm hoping to God that something does happen. We get we get through what we have to get through. And uh, I appreciate you bringing me on today. I know we've been playing this. The last time we probably streamed together was probably we both first started YouTube a long time ago. So it's been yeah. been a while. Time, yeah, it's been a long time. It's something we've talked about a ton. I haven't really had a chance to do, but I'm glad to do it today. And yeah, we need a win. We need a win. I, I think we need to, to bust out at least three wins in a row to get back in this thing. And I think it's possible. You go. You got the Giants tonight, who stink. You got Dallas then after a mini buy who stink, and then you get a bye week, and then you get the stinky Giants again. There's no reason why the Eagles shouldn't win the next three games. And if they lose tonight, forget it. It's, it's to burn this thing down. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think yeah. I think it's pretty much I think it's pretty much going to be over if they if they lose this game today. It's gonna something has to be done. I don't know if it's with the front office or or whatnot, but the way this offense has been playing, the predictable play calling, just a bad defensive scheme on some weeks, and there are guys that have contracts right now that really aren't panning out and really aren't being productive. Guys that we expected to have big years or sort of you know get there you know to the top, but hasn't happened yet so i'm expecting something good but we really have been complaining about the offense the past few weeks i mean as of you know carson wentz and his you know his his play and uh due to the first three weeks of the season and i mean i think the first half of the you know the first few games was like their preseason i guess with you know no rookie mini camp no preseason games i mean i'm not pretty much putting all the blame on that but this team was definitely not prepared coming into the 2020 season that's definitely yeah. Shout out to Lord Bronx, and he says, make that bait mole rat shave. It, it, it's going to happen. We're going to win. The question is, is, I don't know that Pizzle has the balls to actually go through with it. What's up, LB? How you, man? I, I definitely don't think he has the balls to do it. You know what I mean? I think that – I think that the biggest problem with the Eagles – Really, one of the biggest problems is the slow starts. I think the first 15 scripted plays by Doug has have been horrible. And I think they put cars in that offense into slow starts. I would like to see a much better setup now. I mean, we, we got to admit, if Hightower catches that ball early last week, uh, it may change the whole that whole drive. I don't know if he scores a touchdown, but, you know, it is what it is, you know. They need to get some of these guys back into games. They need to go. They need to get away from these double tight end sets. They need to start getting the ball around these other receivers. Like the first half of this Ravens game, where is Travis Fulgham in this game? Where is right. he in this game? Like this guy could probably have over 150 yards receiving every game. I'm not even trying to say it as like you know. I hope everybody agrees with me that Travis Fulgham. Look. I say he's a number one receiver, but I'm saying that as of right now, what we have with all the injuries, he is our number one receiver. But I'm telling you, this guy, you got to keep throwing him the ball. Keep throwing him the ball, and everybody yeah. else will it, it will fall into place. Let the offense work for you. Right. Well, yeah, and there were times where he wasn't even on the field in the first half. It made no sense. We got 288, 298 people watching. Oh. Please like, please subscribe, and if you get a chance, hit the – Link in the description to Joey's channel and sub my man up. Great Eagles YouTuber. And I'm glad. I'm just, I'm so excited that he, he actually wanted to come on and talk to this dingbat. So it, it's very, very cool. Okay. Now, let me ask you something. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to pull up some people's questions when, when I see some stuff. Oh, let's go. We need this stuff, but I don't think we are winning this. Sorry. You don't, you don't think we're going to beat the, uh, Giants? Come on. Chris Kaufman, thank you so much for the super chat, man. He says, bring back the shovel pass, Doug. He wants a shovel pass. All right. I, all right. I think um I think I think it's all I think Fogum's the real deal. You think Fogum's the real deal? 
I think he is, honestly. And then you don't even have Rager in this offense yet. And he's sitting pretty much, he's pretty much sitting, you know, putting up these emojis and doing some taking notes type of emojis and pretty much telling the world that they're already kind of taking him off the list of being in the NFL as of right now. Because the Eagles fans now, all they're saying is this, you know, they're seeing Justin Jefferson make a lot of plays. They're seeing all these receivers pretty much be productive. So since Jalen Rager is hurt, everyone's thinking that he's not going to do anything anymore or, yeah. you know, that he just doesn't have it or he's just going to be hurt. And, and that's it. But I think this was the right pick of this draft obviously yeah but yeah i i, I mean I, I i i agree with you i agree as marie de booth thank you so much to sub up these two guys philly and joey are two of the absolute best as marie de booth you're the best a big dingbat nation supporter she's the best ab thank you for super chat he says let philly lb joey today is a good day for us i put a hundred dollars on the birds to take it our d-line shot i sent pizzle Twenty dollars for raises. <laughs> Ab is gonna need him. He's gonna he's gonna run hide like the rat he is. You watch. Now, Joey, what do you think about this running back situation? Because I'm very frustrated that one Corey Clements looks like he he's shot. But also Scott to me doesn't look like he as fast as he does here. And for whatever reason, they don't bring Elijah Holyfield up. And I think Elijah Holyfield was a guy that in camp was driving the defenses nuts. They were calling for him to come out in goal line situations. Um, what, what do you think about this running back situation, especially tonight with no miles? The thing is, they've been using Boston Scott, even though Boston Scott has had reps, they've been just blasting him up the middle pretty much. I mean, that's not what he's used for. You look at the tape from the end of last year, they used him in open space screen game. Our screen game is non-existent right now. We can't even use it, period. It's it, it's we, we, would, we were one of the pretty much the best teams using the screen pass like for years, and then all of a sudden it's just not working. But you know why? Because the playbook is so vanilla. The playbook is so bold. The playbook is so plain right now that defenses really don't have to play Plan for that much and it's really easy Corey Clement he hasn't been the same he's been you know he hasn't been the same at all and I he's not like he doesn't have the special run set he's you know, he an average running back I think what really took him away from uh when we used him back at you know back in 17 was he had really good vision and we actually put him in the passing game which they didn't do uh, when he was at college so I think um Elijah Holyfield, 100%, I agree with you. He, I saw videos of him in training camp, and he was always making the first guy miss. Deuce yeah. Daly always said good things. He plays with passion. He plays with fire in his eyes, playing angry, getting those extra yards. We have no bruiser. That's why, you know, even when we let Jordan Howard go, I was kind of, he really didn't want to leave. And I don't think the Eagles fans and us, we didn't want him to leave either. So we don't have a bruiser. So I don't know what Doug is doing with some of these guys, but Corey Clement and Boston Scott, probably not going to be enough. But I hope that they're going to use them in different ways today because yeah. uh, having Miles Sanders as a dual threat back to put him in the passing game as well is going to be, you know, it's a big difference. It, it just seems like to me that the one, the one back that gives you something different than the other backs is Elijah Holyfield. And why he is not coming up, it, it bothers me. And it bothered me when I was listening to Doug's press conference earlier in the week where he was talking about, other running backs, but he, well, he never mentioned Holyfield. And I think at some point Holyfield will come out, out of come up out of a necessity and then will wind up being really good. And it'll be another guy off the practice squad that the coaching staff could not recognize was ready to contribute. Michael you know? War Michael Warren got I think he got he got uh picked up as well. Michael Warren got picked up yeah. picked up our practice squad. So we don't really have many bruisers left now. So it's yeah. only him. Yeah. So Eagles Company says Fogelman and Deshaun will be different. Deshaun Jackson, he has to prove something to me because he hasn't shown me anything except for one game the first two years he's been here. He's been back. I mean, he, he wasn't hurt earlier in the year. He did nothing. So until I see something with Deshaun Jackson on the field, I, 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 I don't know. I, I do not know. The issue I have with Deshaun Jackson right now is that Doug is not using him as like a number one receiver. Like he's being cautious with him, and he's out. And he's already mentioned that. Like it's already, it's already enough that you know he takes a lot of days off of practice. They rest him up, but at the same time, they're just using him for little little sideline catches. They're not really throwing the ball downfield either. Like they're just they're being too cautious. This guy's getting paid thirty million for three years, and you're you're being cautious with this guy. If he gets hurt, he gets hurt. It is what it is. Like that's that's. Yeah. Injuries are part of the game, but I think we got the show on five years too late. I just think 
I agree. Just looking at the past, you know, between this year and last year, I just think we got him way too late, and I feel I, it, it stinks because. You know, I remember back in 17, he teased us about coming back. And, you know, yeah. uh, unfortunately, it's just I think it's too late. And the guy just can't take a hit anymore. And that's just the yeah. truth. Yeah. Hey, Spunky 1991, man. Thank you so much for the super chat, man. Appreciate that so much. Uh, Spunky, one of the other great YouTubers on here. Uh, definitely sub him up. I always enjoy his truck driving escapades. I like oh, yeah. watching what different cities he is. And I hope, I mean, he was here what, a few months ago. I was hoping to get in touch with him. Hopefully one of these days it'll work out. But Spunky1991, thank you so much for the Super Chat. We got 437 people in here. Wow. Please like, please subscribe. Make sure you hit that like, uh, the link to the description. My man Joey Shakes. And uh, definitely sub him up. You will not be disappointed. I promise you that. Um, Joe Miruana. Joe Miruana. <laughs> All right. He says, will Quez Watkins play? I think Quez Watkins plays, but it, it's like how much will they use him? Will they take any shots with him? Will they get him involved in his offense? I think a smart coach, and I'm sorry, Doug, but you know it, this is just the truth, would design something for him to get him involved, especially with the speed and stuff that he does possess. possess you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I think even with some of these other receivers as well, like Quez, like it, it's like so late in the game now. Like, obviously that injury kind of hurt him a little bit, but um, but then coming back with John Hightower, they're kind of using John Hightower on the same routes, and they're kind of doing the same thing with him. I really don't see a lot of different route combinations. I see almost the same thing every week with some of these guys. Um, obviously with the drops with with Hightower, but Quez, I, I really want to see his potential. I think he is a steal, but obviously the reps are going to make what he's going to be. So we just have to wait and just see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, it, it'll be interesting. It really will. Now, when it, when, it, when we talk about the defense, okay. Now there's this guy on this team that I blame every thing wrong that has ever happened in the world. I don't care if it's earthquakes, floods, homelessness, people starving, disease. I don't care what it is. It's Nate Gary's fault. That guy absolutely stinks. Why do you think that they would even put him on the field at this point? We must have mistaken him for LJ Fort, honestly. Yeah, I I did hear a uh, shout out to Bubba, but he did bring up something interesting. He said that Jim Schwartz plays Nate Gary to show Howie Roseman. Basically, you should have took a linebacker that I wanted. And now you did it, and you screwed me on the linebackers. So here's Nate Gary. I thought it was kind of interesting take. Um, I don't know if it's true, but I just can't understand why on earth you would ever play Nate Gary one snap. He absolutely stinks, and and I blame I blame every every problem in the world on him. I do. Yeah, no, I, you would think after releasing Nigel Bradham, like when they released Nigel Bradham, I was like really surprised. I was like, oh my god, they're gonna they're gonna upgrade this linebacker core. They're gonna we're gonna get younger. I mean, look, a lot of these guys are good against the run, but not only that, not only that, but you got two guys. Your third round pick's not even playing, and he played almost his first game fully against right. the Ravens, and he actually showed a little bit of. He was chasing Lamar Jackson down, like showed a little bit of promise. But if he stinks right now, if if Davion Taylor stinks right now, like I don't blame him for. For playing bad, how can I blame him? He's not getting the playing time. Sean Bradley, every time he comes in, he's always making plays. And what do they do? He's on the bench most of the time. So not only that, but these guys, most of these guys are good, I guess, against the run. But they follow that eye candy in the backfield so much now is that whenever an offense does motion or there's misdirection or something like that, they all fall for it. I mean, right, right. it's it's bad. Like yeah. trick play, it's almost automatic. They do it. Any team does a trick play, we're done. It's over. Um, it's this. It's it's the middle of the field is is where we're hurting. And it's like the Steelers game. We line Claypool. I swear to God, I was sitting on the couch. And I said they lined Claypool in the slot. I said that we're done. He's gonna score right here. Boom. Yeah. Didn't even take much. Nope. It's ridiculous. No, it is bad. It is bad. We got a super chat from Jim Schwartz himself. <laughs> Jim Schwartz is here. And he says, I am the best coordinator <laughs> in the game. He is well then prove it. Get Nick Gary the hell out. Thank you for the super chat. 
Jim Schwartz. Now go go to work. Go go get us a win. Run it back podcast. Shout out to you, man. Another great uh Philly content creator. Definitely go sub him. He says, What's up, my guys? Go birds. Gonna go on a run starting tonight. Probably setting myself up for depression. Tonight, you're not setting yourself up for, for depression. We are gonna win tonight. We better yeah. win, or my hair's coming off. So yeah. and then my place <laughs> double move off my ass. So it has to happen. Yeah, I don't I don't understand. Here's my thoughts. Like if you see Nate Gary, how bad he plays. Like, did you see the one play where they did an end around to receiver and it was like a third and fourth, right? And this is when I, I lost my mind on my stream. And Gary has the perfect angle. All he has to do is keep running, and he's going to tackle this guy for a two, three-yard loss. He might knock him out of bounds. And he stops, takes some weird angle. Like, he wanted him to go around him. He looked like, to me, he's running in high heels. And to me, he can't make – he makes so many mistakes. I don't care if Davion Taylor's going to make mistakes. Mistakes. I don't care if Sean Brown let them play because because they're they're already better than him just from an athletic standpoint. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, what's what's it going to hurt, Ozzy? I think with Sean Bradley, because I've been studying him since I've been su- studying him since college, and and he was actually out of our whole group, he's the best coverage linebacker we do have. But for some reason, they just don't use him. I I don't know at this point. I really don't. Makes no well, sense to me. 1991, $50 super chat. Man, my God, man. Thank you so much, dude. I don't I don't even know what to say. I'm going to start crying. Thank you, Spunky. He says, can I get the bad dog? Of course you get the bad dog. I've been singing all night. Bad dog is bad dog. Because he knows that I is always bad. Bad dog is bad dog. Bad dog is bad dog. Daniel Jones, he's getting any work for NASA. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Spunky man, thank you for the super chat, man. I it's very kind of you, man. Shout out to Spunky. Everyone go sub up Spunky. Definitely. Everyone. He is a good friend. He's been with me, God, probably under a hundred subscribers. He was one of my first. So definitely sub him up. Spunky, you are the man. Chris Kaufman, thank you for the super chat, man. He says, Do you think there's any credence to the fact that Howie is controlling the starting roster. That's why – that may be why Gary's still here. Yeah, I mean, what did you think about the, the, the reports? And thank you for the Super Chat, Chris Kaufman, Spunky. Thank you guys so much. But what did you think about – Um, what did you think about the whole report that how he's controlling who's in the active lineup and, and whatnot? I, I really I, – I hope it's not true. I mean, when I heard about it, I it's actually scary to think about if he has all the control now. And if these coaches don't have final say, obviously, if you know, with Jim and, and Doug, like if they don't have like they're they're there to coach and, and how he's building the rosters. And uh, if that's not the case, I, I don't I don't know. I really hope that's not it, because if we find out that's that's what was going on, this team is going to be in trouble. It's already enough. We're in cap hell right now. Yeah. And we restructured Fletcher Cox to save some money. I don't know what that random restructure was. I, I don't know. The save over 5.7, whatever it was, it makes no sense to me. I, I don't know. I, I don't like that. I'm not going to lie to you. It, that made no sense to me. I understand you want to free up some money maybe to roll in, but what is it? We were talking like $5 million. Um, I think we get too caught up in these restructures, and then they come back and haunt us. Yeah on the road because you're just pushing the money. I think it's okay to do sometimes. I think the Eagles do it way too much. Um, I don't like it. But unfortunately, I think that's how he's MO uh, uh, to, to control the active roster. We've heard about how he gets along with football people in the past. I think Howie Roseman has, has gone back to pre-boiler room Howie Roseman, to be quite honest with you. you know? Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I. I just hope that it's he's not taking control of this roster. I hope it's not. I hope that's not the case. I, I really yeah. because these decisions that are happening right now, like if Howie has control of the draft, has control of you know what his scouts are doing to go get players in the draft. Obviously, we know it's not working. So yeah. these big contracts, these big free agents we're signing and that are not panning out. Javon Hargrave, six high paid defensive tackle in the league, and he hasn't. Is he still injured? I mean, I, I don't know where to go here with this. Is he still injured? What's going on? Derek Barnett's supposed to have a big year. He ended up getting hurt in train camp. Finally came back. Hadn't really done much of anything. So Josh Sweat is looking like pretty much 
a really good player at defensive end right now for us. You know, it has been getting better every single year, but uh, I, I I hope it's not that. I really hope not. I, I'm done with Howie. I ain't gonna lie. Done. Hey, uh, thank you for the super chat, man. He says when the rookie linebacker is going to play, tired of Gary. I'm hoping tonight. I'm hoping tonight, but it, I don't know. I mean, if I'm if I'm the Giants, if I'm any team, every time I line up, I'm looking where's forty seven. Whereas, for, oh, there he is, my bitch, and I'm going right at him, um, and and we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully that that you know that that won't be the case. TJ Clutch, thank you for the super chat. Do you think we should make Doug the next GM? Oh no. hell, hell no. no. no I, think, I think I think you got to tell Doug he has to be get an offensive coordinator, and that's just the way it is. And then I'd give him one more year. I think Doug could be a good head coach, but I don't think he's a good head coach and offensive coordinator. Um, thank you, TJ, for the uh, super chat, man. I really appreciate that, man. I, 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 you know what? I think Doug can't hire his staff. Doug hires his friends. Doug, hi, like, look at this. Like, Deuce Daly's what? A run game coordinator, an assistant head coach, and a running backs coach. It, it's like. It's like ridiculous. Like Mike Rowe is Mike Rowe went from a wide receiver coach to an offensive coordinator. Press Taylor, what is he doing as a quarterback? As a quarterback coach, I, I some of these, some of these, they're just I, the 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 main issue I I don't like is that they like hiring from within or promoting from within. They don't like get some new blood out there to come in. It's like very family orientated, too friendly, and it's I feel like it's less business half the time. So yeah. I don't know. It's just me though. Yeah. System of the knot. He says, Philly, I just read an article saying the Eagles are talking to Beast Mode. What do you think about bringing in Beast Mode, though? I mean, it can't hurt. No, I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't mind it at all. As long as it's cheap and a one-year deal, I mean, that, that's fine, I guess. Um, we'll see. We got 570 people here. Please like, please subscribe, and make sure you click the link in the description. And go sub up Joey Shakes. He does an absolute phenomenal job. I watch all the stuff. And I promise you, you're not going to be disappointed. So if you haven't, which I'm sure many of you already know who he is, sub him up. Sub Shit. him up. Shit. Now, here's one thing I want to ask you. Um, I want to talk a little bit about this trade deadline coming. Because um, there's a lot of people who are saying we should try to get Julio Jones, try to get Antonio Brown, try to go get these guys before the dead deadline. You saw Yannick Nagagwe got traded to the Ravens from Minnesota. What, what do you think? the Eagles should do leading up to the trade deadline. I think we shouldn't be bought. We should not be buyers period. I, I think we should totally sell, sell, sell. You're looking at Alshon Jeffrey. You're looking at obviously Zach Ertz is probably, I don't know if you can. The thing is at the trade deadline, you're trying to fleece other teams. Everybody's trying to fleece each other for as much, you know, as possible for players. But Zach Ertz is probably the number one guy on my list right now because I just, I'm done. I just feel like he's been exposed. I feel like when we're not doing double tie-in sets anymore, I feel like it's starting to show now he can't do it by himself. And even in that Ravens game, remember the week before, you know, Carson's like, oh, we need Zachers to have a big game. And then this game comes and they're force feeding him the ball into small windows. Like that's why these other receivers aren't getting anything on top of JJ Ortega Whiteside that's still on the field. And he's getting used to be a blocker, pretty much being a blocker. That's it. A two point conversion. And then what a Miles Sanders fumble in the end zone. He gets it. And he's supposed to get praise for that. Yeah. It's ridiculous at this point. I, I, with Zach Ertz got to go. Like, I don't care. Like I'll, I'll take a third round pick. Just get him out of here. Dallas Goddard's the future period. And that's it. Yeah. No, I, dude, I, I said this at the end of the last year, right as we lost to Seattle, I said I would trade Zach Earth, and people lost their mind. Mm -hmm. And it was because you knew the contract situation was coming. It was right after they said that Zach Earth turned down a contract. So you got to trade him because you would have gotten way more than you were going to get now. Now we're talking about possibly, maybe if we're lucky, a third pick. And oh, by the way, he's on the IR. So how do you trade a guy on the IR? Before the trade deadline, I don't even know if you can trade him now. So to me, this is stupidity at the front office. Um, and and one of the big problems that this front office has had is they they reward players for what they did four or five years ago. And it's nice and it feels good, but it doesn't put a winner on the team. And, and if you no. look at some of the guys we have, they're, they're they're old. I mean, look, they restructured Fletcher Cox's deal. I was thinking of trading them. 
<laughs> I'm not gonna lie. No, I no, no. I I'm telling. I, I don't blame you because literally the past few weeks, like, look, like you look at Aaron Donald and Fletcher Cox, like they're two, they're very different because Fletcher is great against the run and, and his pass rush. I, obviously, I think I think the pass rush isn't as good, but but I think with with Fletcher Cox, like. He's, he's, he went in the one game with one tackle. I forgot what game it was, but he was going back and forth. He really wasn't doing much. He was getting he's right. getting double team. He really can't fight double teams too much like Aaron Donald can. You know what I mean? That's why Aaron Donald, I'll trust him more on double teams to get through. But I don't blame you for tra- for wanting to trade well, Fletcher Cox. I really yeah, I don't. Thought, I thought the Hargrave signing was an indication of they were planning a future without Fletcher Cox. But now that they were structured, I don't think that's the case. So. Once again, they tied all this money into really two – what, the defensive tackle position. Uh, you know, Derek Barnett, to me, is not lived up to his first-round billing. Um, Brandon Graham continues to give you something. Oh, give yeah. You everything every week. But he is getting older, and he is like $13.5 I think Josh Sweat has been a nice find. He's come on this year. Um, but I, I really think that this team should be sellers too. I, I would stay away from Julio Jones. I, I love him. Great player. But I would stay away from those guys. Now, if I could trade an older guy for a younger prospect, like some people were saying Zach Ertz for Miles Jack, I would do something like that. But the Eagles don't value linebacker enough. And and it really makes you wonder wh- where this team is going to go. I mean, isn't it weird that this team, when they have all their veterans and, and older players, we don't do anything. However, however, when we play these practice squad guys, these young guys, the, the team starts to, to play good. It's it, there's something. It's, it's complete opposite. It's just I don't know what it is. They play better with off the street guys than they do with their active roster and their starters. I don't know. <laughs> Spunky nineteen ninety one. Thank you for the super chat, my man. You are too generous today, man. Shout out to Spunky. Everybody, go sum up, man. I I love the guy and um, man, Spunky. I have to get you on the show as well, my friend. Um, but thank you for super chat. He says, "I'm going to quit bothering you guys and let you do your live stream in peace." But one last, one last request: Can I get to entertain us all? Man, I don't even. I gotta think about the entertain us all for a second. You can. Let me think of it. I, I, let me see. I haven't done the entertainer song in so long. The entertainer knows that dolphin love is taboo. The entertainer. Knows that his hammer makes it true. <laughs> the entertainer knows that the giants always stink. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I can't believe I just remembered that. I am a moron. Yes. Thank you <laughs> once again, Spunky, for the super chat. Now, all night, everybody's going to want me to sing the entertainer song. You know, thank you, Spunky, man. You are too generous. Thank you. We got 626 people here watching. Please like, please sub. If you haven't, click the link in the description and go sub up my man, Joey Shakes. Uh, Marshall, thank you for the super chat. Fly, Eagles, fly. Love my Eagles nation. And you, Philly 500, you know, man, we got this Eagles nation. Thank you, Marshall, for the super chat. I feel good about I feel good about tonight's game. I do. I definitely feel good. Um, but, you know, you never know. Uh, the, like I said to you before we started this, the biggest thing that scares me about this game is just the fact that you've beat a team seven times in a row, and you know at one point that's not that's not going to happen, you know. So, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see, you know. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. Big play, Slay yeah. says. Now, when Travis Fogelman literally jumped over two All Pro corners, Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Spears, I knew he was the number one receiver. Yeah, I mean, he jumped up. Those guys kind of got caught together, but like. He caught the ball. Most of our guys would would drop it. So, yeah, I I, I agree with you, man. I, I'd stay. I'd be sellers. And uh, I don't know. Do you think how he's going to want to buy, or do you think he's going to sell? I think he's going to sell. Think I think so? he's. I think. I think. No. You know what? You know. I think he is gonna. I think he is gonna definitely try to go after somebody. There's always. So he might actually try to go after somebody and not get them. I think that's what's going to happen. <laughs> that's the realistic thing that's going to happen. Like, I feel like we're always used as poise to like up offers and to get teams to get fearful because we're we, you know it's always like Eagles are interested. Eagles are going to be doing this. Eagles are then nothing happens. Like nothing happens. 
You there's, know, no, there's there's no doubt in my mind that, you know, I know like the A B rumors and stuff, but you know what? The Eagles have tried going after him once. They could go after him again. I, I don't know I don't think I don't think wide receiver is the, the big issue of this team. It's I think it's far from it, obviously. I, I just think I think we've been we've been moving offensive line all over the place, obviously, you know, with the wide receiver situation with who's on the field, I think that's the problem. Who's on the field and the targets and what we're doing. Yeah, I, th- I think that's that's the big issue and the scheme is a big issue. Um, you know, but I don't, I don't, I don't see them going after a linebacker. I just, I just don't see it. No, I don't, I don't either. What do you think of, um, what do you think of like the Giants tonight? Like what scares you most about the Giants? If you had to say one thing, I think their defense has actually played tough. Like I think as a unit, they have been playing tough. You know, they got Brad, they got Bradbury on one side. They have Logan Ryan, you know, you got to watch out for those guys, obviously. But, you know, I think, you know what, at this point, I think I think we could hand, I think our offense could could take it. We just got to – hopefully they have a good game plan tonight. I think that's really all that's really going to matter. Um, you know, and then when you talk about the Giants offensively as well with, you know, uh, I'm, you know I, depending on what the receipt with, with Slayton and, and a few of these other guys, with Shepard coming back, I think some of these are game-time decisions with some of these guys. Golden Tate's definitely on the field, so yeah. um, you know, Slay, Slay and at least we got Maddox back this week. That's a good thing as well. But yeah. I think that defense is is very poised. I think obviously they've been losing games, but they've actually been playing. You know, they they did a good job on on the Rams, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, and uh, I think I think they've been playing good. But obviously the the wins aren't there. Daniel Jones is is choking constantly. So, yeah, I, I hear you. S. Marita Booth, thank you for the super chat. You are the best. Appreciate you so much. And I should have I should have a tinfoil dingbat probably out Sunday night or Monday. I'm where I, I'm finishing up this weekend. Philly boy, oh wait, thank you for the uh, super chat. He says Fogelman is a goat. We win tonight, thirty to three. Go birds! I would love thirty to three. I would love an easy night for once instead mm-hmm. of having to lose my mind. But thank you so much for the super chat. Michael, thank you so much for the super chat. He says, How about the monster from down under? Jordan Mulata has three starting career football games and is already better than Dillard. Do we convert Dillard to left guard? I don't know if Dillard could play left guard. I really don't. I mean, I don't mind taking a chance. And if, if Mulata's a guy, let's trade, let's trade Dillard. Uh, but thank you for the super chat. What have you thought of, of, of Jordan? Malaz's been playing. I mean, just they're calling him Highway 68 now. Highway got to ride on. Got to ride on Highway 68 because that guy. You know, remember? I think what's what Brian Bollinger said. He said you could take. Like you could take the rugby out of football, but you take. I take the man out of rugby or something like that. And it's <laughs> he did the tackle, and then he picked the guy who was getting up and he just threw him back. I'm like, I love this guy already, dude. You know. At 6'8", 350 pounds, like if he could turn into a solid left tackle, I mean, that size. And the thing is, it's so crazy because if he does lose leverage with his hands, he just moves his body in front and then relocates his hands again. So yeah, he's been playing violent. I mean, very violent. And, here, here's my, and this is my issue, though. Why is it that the Eagles didn't recognize that he was ready to play? They lose Dillard. They want to automatically move Jason Peters left tackle and they give him more money to yeah. play left tackle when all they ever had to do is give him a lot of chance. This is one of the issues I have with this team, you know, and, and you see it with Fogum, you see it with Greg Ward Jr. saw it with Ball Scott. This is constantly what they do for whatever reason. They don't look, trust their talent evaluation. They don't trust these young guys and it, and it kills us, you know, yeah, we find out who the stars are when we're getting injured. They, they and they, and they think they're going to take all the credit for that. Oh, we always knew that he was special and always knew this, but we only find out about these no-name guys yeah. by injuries. And it's not because of our drafting or free agency. It's because we get hurt and they're like, "Wow, there's someone that just comes up the depth chart and yeah. automatically surprises us." So that's yeah. that makes I don't you know. wonder what the hell's going on. Captain Trips, man. Sorry I missed your super chat for a second, man. Uh, but but I I see it. Um, he says I would love to see Boston Scott and Derrick Henry standing <laughs> next to each other. That would be pretty interesting. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I would definitely like to see that too. Captain Trips, thank you so much for the super chat. We got 633 people here. Please like, please subscribe, and hit the link in the description. And definitely sub up my man Joey Shakes. Appreciate it, guys. Sean, thank you for the super chat. Putting the bank on the Eagles tonight. Sorry for bothering. You're not bothering. Uh, hey man, I put my head on the line tonight for the Eagles. Well, they better <laughs> literally. They better deliver. <laughs> literally, literally. You know, 
crazy. How he, Keith, Keith says something interesting. How he tries to outsmart everybody. This is something that I, I definitely believe. Um, because I think how he makes these choices, especially in the second round, where it's like, what are you doing? And he thinks it's like I think he thinks he's smarter than everybody else. Like he is going to show you by picking some guy nobody thought of. I mean, I can't get over every time I see D, DK Metcalf, I get sick. I get sick in my stomach. And and I just can't get over that, you know. I I think you gotta take I think you have to take player evaluation out of Howie Roseman's hands. Yeah, that's that's what we did. Like we he did it uh, when we drafted Dillard. It was a heavy defensive line draft, and he went total opposite, went offensive tackle. Like he thinks he's doing everything. Jim Schwartz right is agreeing. See, tell me about it. He's been playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, heat seeking moisture missile. Heat seeking moisture missile. What? What? Who the hell is that? Oh, uh, Charlie Sheen. Okay, I love that thumbnail. Carson throws for three touchdowns. And get 350. I got the greatest thing back in the world on this. These people are awesome. Let's see. We wouldn't even be able to get a smelly expired milk carton for Earth or Alshon at this point. Yeah, Alshon is another one. The whole the whole situation with Alshon is very frustrating too because they did not put him on the physically unable to perform list. They didn't. They just used the roster for all for what seven weeks. With yep. this guy, and now he's got a calf strain. I mean, I'm I'm tired of him. I'm tired of Deshaun. I'm tired of these guys, man. I just want them to go. I don't even want them to come back and play at this point. No. I mean, really, you know? No, nope. no. Nope. It's it's just crazy. Because before the calf strain, I was saying he was going to be the perfect person to trade by the trade deadline. He's getting healthy. You know, someone team can get him when he's fresh. Not a lot of tread on the tires right now, and hasn't played in a while. But then after this, I don't know. It's kind of in the bag now. Yeah. Bad Babylon says, how he gets praised for how he handles the cap when all he does is kick the can down the road and screw up badly later on. I agree. I totally uh, well, agree. But that's Marie DeBooth. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, my God. $200. Wow. Stupid. Are you kidding me? I can't take you. Oh my God. Thank you so much. She says, Hey, Philly, send Joey a hundred. Eagles family, sub up two favorite YouTubers, Philly and Joey. Esmeralda DeBooth, thank you so much. I, I will send Joey a hundred bucks. Appreciate no it, question. man. Uh, thank you so much. I, I, I don't even know what to say. Um, thank you, Esmeralda DeBooth. I appreciate it. The uh, support is real. The support is real for 500, man. I tell you, you guys are great. She, she's a, she's a throne room of dingbat. She watches all my ten foot debates. She's the best. And she's been with me a long time. Esmer Debut, thank you so much for super chat. We are honored and we just appreciate it so much. I I just want to give you a big hug and kiss, but I can't through the computer. But thank you for super chat, man. I I don't know, man. That that I don't crazy. know. Crazy. I don't even. I'm speechless. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate it. Fernando says, get the old guys out of here. If we win, it's because of the younger guys, not them. Alshon didn't catch like Fogum last year. I I agree with you. I, I totally agree. I, I totally agree, man. I just Esri just blew me away there. Oh. <laughs> wow! Thank you, Esri the Booth. Thank you so much. We got six hundred forty-four people watching. Please like, please subscribe to the channel, um, and make sure you hit the link in the description and go sub up my man Joey Shakes. Justin, thank you for super chat. He says Rager going to back, be back for the Cowgirls, and is Alshon gone? No, Alshon's not gone. Unfortunately, I don't think they're going to do anything with him. And I hope Rager comes back for the Cowboys. I have a feeling he's not going to come back until no. after the until the Giants game. Yeah, I probably. But I think Miles. Way. I'm guessing Miles will be back. You know, he might. I think it was what one to two weeks. Wasn't, was he two, wasn't he one to two weeks? two weeks? And you got like a mini bye week. So you got like 10 days off. Yeah. So I think he's got a, sh a legitimate shot to play. And if you can get him to play that one game, then he gets another bye week. So I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping. Wentz better. Oh, isn't the record for the most amount? Uh, isn't that a record for the, That is my record for the most amount. So yeah, my, that's my biggest super chat ever. Wow. And I, I'm blown away. I, I am. Thank you so much. 
Hey, Philly 500, I think this game against the Giants will be so boring. Eagles win 17-14. When your hair is on the line and your head is on the line, it isn't boring. It isn't boring. Uh, no, I, 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 I think it's going to be a very, very tough game. You know, Tony says, oh, let me get this. I know we're frustrated with Alshon, but don't forget his game against the Dolphins. He did really good. Yeah, I mean, look, Alshon, if he's in shape and he's healthy, he, he's, a, he's good. But, I mean, when, when you're constantly hurt and, and you're taking up a raw my, – my issue is more why is he not on the physically unable to perform list for six weeks instead of having him on the active roster. And on top of all that, it's a year-to-year league. And the, the Eagles have had issues. They've been paying some of these guys. They've been – because of what they did or – for, from a few years ago or from that Super Bowl. That Super Bowl shadow is just lingering over us, and they're getting, you know, you can't have too many down years. You know what I mean? You can't, you just can't do it. It's a year-to-year yeah. league with some of these guys. You can't do that. Yeah. Bubba, my man. Bubba, I was just talking about your Nate Gary uh, theory. I really like it. I don't even want d back because, you know, Doug still don't know how to use them. That's true. And Doug's only going to play him 15 to 20 snaps at this point. Yeah, I hear you. He, he doesn't know how to. You know, I agree with you. Muhammad says, us dingbats will take over YouTube. We have a leader in Fleet Five. You know we're taking it all over. <laughs> you, you know. And we're starting with, with Pizzle. We're going to Pizzle his ass tonight. Super Tony, thank you for the super chat, man. Appreciate it. Yo, Philly and Joey Shakes, let's get this dub tonight for my birthday. Happy birthday, Happy super birthday, bro. Y'all keep up the great work. Dallas stinks. Nate Gary stinks. <laughs> I I couldn't agree with you more. Thank you, Super Tony, for the super chat. Appreciate that, man. So, what do you think? Like, if you had to give us final score prediction, what do you think it would be? Oh boy, twenty eight, twenty eight, twenty four. Eagles. That's a, close one. That's a close one. I have twenty four, thirteen. Eagles. Dang. Well, we'll see. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I know. <laughs> I don't know what to expect with this team anymore. TJ Clutch, thank you so much for Super Chat. He says, linebackers, edge rushers are needed and a new defensive coordinator. I I, I agree. I totally agree. It, the, the linebacking thing just blows my mind. It really just blows my mind that they would go into this season with the linebackers they have. It, it's fun. It I just think it's funny because we were worried about corner last year, and then finally we get an upgraded corner. Darius Slay is actually playing really well right now, and it's just like now the whole defense is are not the whole defense is a problem, but now we're having pr- trouble at linebacker. We're having trouble with you know Jalen Mills has been moving the corner now. You know uh, before you know when Maddox got hurt, you know he hasn't really been playing good at corner either. So even right. even Nicole Roby Coleman has had pretty bad games as well. Like he hasn't really played up to par either. So I don't know. Yeah. I remember how he said when he signed the Kel Roby Coleman, he said, oh, in 2017, we wanted to sign him off his rookie deal. We couldn't get him, blah, blah, And it's like 18, 19, 20. It's another three years. You know right. what I mean? It's like he don't care how old these players are. I don't right. know. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. Adam Fink, welcome to Dingbat Nation, buddy. Welcome to Dingbat Nation. Thank you for joining. I appreciate that so much. Jack Morgan, thank you for the super chat. King Dingback, great content. Keep up the great work. Can I get the Giants stink song or the Cowboys stink, whatever? All right, we'll do Giants. We'll do the Bad Dog song again. Bad Dog is Mad Dog. Cause he knows Giants always stink. They trade all the back and dress Daniel Jones. He's got the ugliest feet on YouTube and he works for NASA. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm telling you, dude, I could just do concerts. <laughs> you could. You could sell I can't out. People like this stuff. I, I my my voice stinks. Sell out stadiums. I do. These people are great. Oh man, these, these things are coming in. So from the city, thank you so much for the super chat. He says Rager's already ha- Rager already has two injuries. Are you worrying that Rager may be a little injury prone? And thank you for the super chat, though. What do you think, Joey? I'm not really worried about it too much. You know what? Like, I, didn't didn't that injury come off of a really like a suicide pass? Pretty much when he got hit at the same time he caught the ball. Yeah, I think that's what it, it was, right? Yeah, I think I think Carson kind of let him let him out to dry. You know, I don't think I don't uh, think he is. We need we need him back. We just need him back as soon as possible. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Gene Sanders, welcome to Dingbat Nation, buddy. Welcome to Dingbat Nation. 
Thank you so much for joining. Appreciate it. We got 659 people in here. Please like, please subscribe. Hit the link in the description and go sub up my man, Joey Shakes. You're the man, Joey. You're the man, and all you know it, man. Appreciate it, bro. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, I think it's we're interesting times with the Eagles because um, let's say, all right, and let me let me let me ask this question a different way. Some people feel that if the Eagles win, let's say they win seven games, they get into the playoffs, they win the division, that nothing will happen to change the way things are going with Howie Roseman, with Jim Schwartz, with Doug, and an offense. But if you were to lose and be horrible, then it would force change upon you. Which do you feel? Like, do you feel it's better to just win a division, maybe lose a playoff game, or do you think we should do more than that? You know what I'm trying to add? I mean, as it's going right now, look, like you always want to win the division first, you know, and get that done. But, uh, you know, our, the, the main goal to every team every year, no matter how bad or good you are, is that Super Bowl. And, and I want to have a second ring on our finger. But, I mean, you want to talk – I mean, I don't talk about – I don't think about the Super Bowl when the season s- starts, when it's the middle of the season. I just think about winning this division, getting to a playoff game, and hopefully having this team – somewhat healthy uh for a game you know we went into the playoffs last year in the wild card game with we didn't have enough we just didn't have enough Carson only was in eight snaps and and that was pretty much it I was at that game and I was my heart kind of dropped when that happened so um but I think the ultimate goal is is to win a Super Bowl and I I want them to get far do I think it's going to be this year (sighs) probably not but I mean I have optimism that maybe they could get far but I mean, they there's so much that they have to fix now, and so much they have to do to get there. And we got to start winning these these division games are very important. And we have to get on a roll here. Yeah, That's pretty no, much. I hear you. I hear you. And just subbed you up. And as thank you, you're gonna add, great. She's a great uh, subscriber. Thank you're you gonna, very much. I appreciate it. And and you're gonna love having Joey. He's awesome. He's the man. Yeah, I I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I mean, I want to win a division, but at the same time, I don't want to go through another all season with Howie Roseman take making draft picks. So, it, it, you know, like to me, this is this game is a fork in a road game. If the Eagles lose, I'm sorry, but I think it's time to write to write the season off and get the best pick. And then if you win the next three games, if you win this game, then you keep going. But I mean, this division is the worst division I've ever seen. I mean, dude, two and. Th- the Dallas Cowboys are what, two and four, and they're winning. The, they're leading. If we win tonight, we're in first place by half. The, the Cowboys should have. The Cowboys should have won more. I mean, their their record. They should have won more games. I mean, honestly, relatively, they they have looked better than with Dak in there. They actually have looked better. They actually looked good. They've actually got. I mean, I've watched the Cowboys' offense. They've looked, they're have they getting the, the balls to all the receivers. The run game was good. Just can't finish games, making big, crucial mistakes. But now losing the quarterback now and watching that Monday night game was just, I mean, it's so many mistakes. I mean, all, now now they're now they're getting a little taste of our medicine now of the offensive line. No Tyron Smith, no center, no Alale Collins ain't playing. It's, it's a mess over there right now. Yeah, I mean... Is. And now, if I was the Cowboys right now, I mean, if I was the Cowboys, I'd go get Ryan Fitzpatrick, to be honest with you. If that oh, was yeah. me, I'd go get Ryan Fitzpatrick in a half a second. No they, problem. I hope they don't. They don't. <laughs> Thank you for Super Chat, man. He says, we need to send Alshon to the Bears so he can play with Foles. I'm done with him the first time I heard the rumors. Thank you for Super Chat. I don't know if the Bears would want him back. Uh, I, I like Allen Robinson, but I think the Bears are going to be tough. I, I definitely do. Yeah, it's, it's a crazy, crazy situation with Dallas. It is fun watching Mark Holmes cry. I watched Michael Anthony Wears the Fitness actually not even be able to take a nap because he was so disappointed in that defense. And now the defense, now the players are calling out the coaches. I love the chaos. I do. Yeah. But, you know, I would hate to see Dallas get a top five pick. Though. I'm not going to lie. That yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't. I thought their coach was overrated, you know. Jock Talk says, hell, Cowboys should be 0-6, get lucky on side kick and lucky bomb versus Giants. I agree. Totally agree. Yep. Totally agree. G-Code set in the 609 Let me see if I can get it for you, G-Code. There you go. So, um, 
I just I guess I guess we'll we'll start to wrap this thing up, man. So so you feel good about this game tonight? You think what, what do you what would you like to see the Eagles come out and do? Because you already told me what you think the, the Eagles are going to win. So what what do you think they need to do early, especially offensively, to get the, Carson rolling? They need to start Carson with some short passes, get the receivers hot a little bit, and then work the run game. That's that's what they got to do. They got to spread the ball around a little bit. They got to spread everybody out and and just start. I mean, that's really where it's going to start. I mean, it's it's all down to I because I feel like every play that I've seen, like they run the ball two times, like you know, then there's a sack, and then you know, yeah. this offensive line needs to be prepared because uh, I know they moved. Matt, I think Matt Pryor starting at right guard. I think yeah. for this game. So I'm not really worried about Carson Wentz too much, mm-hmm. but. It's just how it's just what plays are going to be called to start off this game, right. and take JJ out of there. Throw to your man. Throw to number thirteen. Okay, and and just and just work from it from there. Spread everybody out and just work from it from there. I'm telling you, yeah. let the offense work for you. That's all. That's all I really have to do. I agree. Philly Talk Podcast. <clears throat> Philly Talk Podcast. Thank you for stupid chat. Everybody, go sub up my man. Philly Talk Podcast. Uh, he says need this W. Definitely. Do Joe got locked? Thank you for the super chat, buddy. He says double move on that ass. Thank you, Joe got locks, and you know it. And and when you want me to come on, let me know. As long as your mom says it's okay, your parents say it's okay you, to interview me. You, I'll come on. I missed some super chats. Which ones did I miss? No, I think I got them all. I think you got them. I don't see. I don't. I don't think I missed. No. I don't think I've missed any, but yeah, it's going to be interesting. I don't worry about Carson per se, but what I do worry about is those f- first 15 scripted plays. Or is Doug going to come out and try to establish any sort of running game? Is he going to use maybe Ball Scott in a screen game? Anything like that I would like to see. Um, my, my fear and how I think this is going to go is it's going to be a close first half, then the Eagles pull away in the fourth quarter um, because I, I just don't like – the preparation that this team has, you know, it's bad. <laughs> it's bad. You know, I just ima- dude, just imagine beginning of the season with a full crowd. Just imagine what would have happened with this crowd if there was an actual crowd, like uh, with the Eagles. Well, playing. I, I, I think that's a big thing for the Eagles. Not having that crowd hurts. Oh yeah, that's more than other teams. You know what I mean? Like a team like the Rams are used to it. It's like it's like every week's a home game for them now. So no, let me ask you something now. So do you think Jalen Hurts should be incorporated into this offense a lot more? Since we have injuries, could they keep the defense on their heels, on their toes right now? Put Jalen Hurts in and get some good plays going there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I thought what they did with him last week kind of sparked the offense. So I, I would continue to do it here and there. The thing is, is that I don't think you can do it every week before teams start to catch up on it, unless you let him throw the ball. Right. You know? And um. You know, people were calling for Carson to get pulled last week, and I was trying to tell him, like, "Look, Jalen Hurts is doing a great job, but he hasn't thrown one ball. What do you What are you going to do when he has to throw 15, 20 times against this Ravens defense? I don't think that's the, the way to bring it. But if they want to mix them in, I, you know, I'm I'm okay with it. You know, even even from that Ravens game, do you think at the end of the second quarter it was a bad sign that they that our own quarterback couldn't get the spark going? At the at the end of the foot, where they had to put in Jalen Hurts to get that spark going. That's all I'm saying. Like, do you yeah, kind of feel I, like? Yeah, I do, and and I think it's a uh, it's a reflection of Doug that he was that deep in the playbook where that's that's where we were at. You know what I mean? S. Marie the Booth. Jesus, thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate it. She says Philly 500 and Joey Shakes are the absolute best. Sub both up. Sub both up. Eagles family. S. Marie. Thank you so much for super fifty dollars super chat. You are too kind, Edward. Thank you so much. Awesome. That's awesome. I don't know what to say. I, I, if you were here, I'd give you a big hug. But thank you, thank you so much. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be. Inter- what are you doing for the game tonight? I'm going to be at my girlfriend's house and going to watch it there. And cool. then I will be back for my post game right after. So if you guys sub to the channel, um, if you guys are new, uh, come on by because I'll be. I will be. Doing it, be yeah. Good. Yes, and I will be streaming live. I will be here for the Eagles, Eagles Giants, and we're gonna go through this. I, I hope, hopefully, I don't lose my shit tonight at at St. Gary again. 
Um, but we'll see. And I'm sure the whole neighborhood will hear me. Um, <laughs> as usual, Josh, Josh, was it Josh Mowry. Thank you so much. And welcome to Dingbat Nation, buddy. Welcome to Dingbat Nation. I appreciate that so much. Um, Joey, I want to thank you, man, for uh, coming on tonight or uh, today and, uh, and and hanging out with me. I know we've been trying to do this for a while. Oh, yeah. Um, so thank you, everybody. If you haven't, click the link in the description and make sure you sub up my man. Um, and that about, that about does it. I want to thank everybody for the generous super chats, the subscriptions, everything. Esmeri the booth. thank you so much. <laughs> you are the best. And uh, Spunky Man, thank you so much. Thank you to everybody. Um, and and anything that goes wrong in your day today, just remember it is Nate Gary's fault. That is <laughs> it, yeah, it definitely is. is. And um, but uh, thank you everybody for joining us. I'm going to end this now because I got a lot of stuff to do before tonight's game, and I'm sure Joey does too. But thank you guys so much, and be sure on the way out to hit the link in the description and sub up my man Joey Shakes. And uh, guys. thank you again, everybody. Yes, Marie. Spunky, I don't know how to thank you, but thank you so much. And with that said, you guys take care. We will talk to you later. And don't be a dingbat. <laughs>